great. So much intrigue as the new generation of supercars are about to roll out for our second instalment on the streets right, of Albert Park this weekend. The Repco Supercars Championship, Borough Pairs Melbourne Super Sprint, race number four in a sequence of 28 in our championship for 2023. And what a battle we saw yesterday. A race resolved by one tenth of a second. And some interesting strategies played. Great interpretation of the rules and the variable weather yesterday afternoon. And on that topic, that is well and truly alive out there at the moment because only a few minutes ago outside, it was quite sunny and sultry. Now it's cooler. The wind's picked up from the south about 20 kilometres an hour and there's a lot of cloud cover. Here's our racetrack, the theatre of action for this afternoon. 5.2 kilometres, 14 turns. Top speed for our cars, 275 kilometres an hour and that average speed is very quick as well. Next to no elevation change on this racetrack. A good mix of slow, medium and fast corners and you're going to see the very best operating these brand new Gen 3 supercars very shortly. And from the pole position, Shane Van Gisbergen who picked up a race win yesterday. Remarkable when you consider that car poked the wall earlier in the day. Great performance by his teammate Brock Feeney. Brody Kostecki in there as well remembering that the Coke cars ended up on the podium yesterday for second and third. Mark Winterbottom with a heap of racing success and wins at this location. David Reynolds always strong here too. Cam Waters and Will Davison. Those Shell V-Power racing team entries have been very quick in qualifying. Keep an eye out for them. A nice recovery off the back of Newcastle. Courtney, whose car was rebuilt off the back of Newcastle alongside Chas Mostert. Anton Di Pasquale, Thomas Randall, who shared his car with the Alpine Academy driver Jack Doohan earlier in the weekend, together with the Formula 1 drivers Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly. Great moment for him. Mark Scaife, good afternoon to you. This is going to be a beauty. 15 laps, four fewer than yesterday, and there'll be a lot of energy about to explode on the racetrack. There certainly will be, Neil. We're looking forward to it. And as you said, these conditions have changed. So what happens in terms of the tyre versus yesterday? There's a bunch of people that have chosen to go with the super soft versus the hard. And there's also some strategy around an early stop. This race will probably be a little bit shorter based on time certainty and the issues that we had with the Formula 3 crashes leading into this session. So what unfolds? Who knows? And that's what we love about this business. Supercars at Albert Park, we turn it on. You talked about the mix of tyres, Mark. Now, yesterday, seven of the 25 chose the harder of the Dunlop tyre and 18 on the Super Soft. They're having an each-way bet today. It's a much more even split. 11 of them will be on the hards, 14 on the Super Soft. They've got to run both of the compounds in the race unless it is declared wet, which did happen yesterday under the radar. We didn't spot it. We're busy looking at something else. That changed the nature of the motor race. But Van Gisbergen on the Super Soft from the pole, alongside Will Brown on the hard tyre. There'll be an immediate pace difference there. But Brock Feeney in the second of the Red Bull Ampole Racing entries also on the Dunlop Super Soft tyre. And if you look across the top 10 generally, there are more of the runners on the harder of the two tyres. So we need to keep an eye out on those that are not. And there are four of them. So you've got Van Gisbergen, you've got Feeney, you've got Courtney and you've got Mostert. They are all on the super soft tyres. So depending on who you're barracking for out there, keep an eye on that. If you are on the hard tyre, Mark and I love to talk about supercar strategy and how we might play the game. The theory probably holds up based on the way the tyres behaved yesterday. You're ticking the box with your hard tyre, you're getting it on now and then do a lap or two, get it off and then get back onto the softer tyre to the end. But the weather <laughs> might have other ideas here. <laughs> It may. Brianna? And there's some breaking news overnight. A bad day turned worse for Todd Hazelwood at Cool Drive Racing. He was disqualified from all of yesterday's sessions for having the incorrect drop gear ratio in the car. So that means he will start this race from dead last position. He'll want every single lap possible to make up those spots. Time certain race has been amended to 33 minutes past the hour of 3 o'clock plus one lap here. And there is Todd Hazelwood at Cool Drive entry. So... The regs dictate that you can't come in before the end of lap two to be able to make that tyre change. We'll keep an eye on that story. Enormous number of people have built up here today. We've already had one Formula One practice session. We've got a second one coming up in the coverage later on this afternoon. Max Verstappen was the fastest by 0.4 of a second over Lewis Hamilton, who's had an unbelievable string of pole positions at this location. Eight of them converted to two race victories. 
but we'll park the notion of the excitement of Formula One for just a moment to get our teeth into an awesome supercar race. Yesterday was pretty willing. We saw a lot of errors early in the day. We saw cars damaged, people make mistakes. They're flighty, they're slippery. That was all on the label at the beginning. That was what was determined for the new car, to have a car that had less aero, that you had to chase. Well, we saw a lot of it yesterday in a very different racetrack by comparison to Newcastle. Yeah, big, fast-flowing, European-style racetrack, this one. It's almost like a purpose-built purpose facility, like a permanent racetrack. And the way that the cars have responded, and I thought, to be honest, that the start of yesterday's race in those inclement conditions, very, very tricky start, that they did a remarkable job, especially to get through Turn 1 without any drama. Well, you can almost guarantee trouble year on year and down at Turn 3. Now, we're hearing there could be an issue with the lights, so keep an eye on the starters' rostrum to the left-hand side of your screen for the Australian national flag to get this one underway with Shane Van Gisbergen on the pole position. Will Brown from position number two. For position number three, Feeney. Remembering that Van Gisbergen and Feeney are on the softer of the two compounds. They should make a great start on the opening lap. Brody Kostecki, who was fast yesterday. The winning margin was just 0.1 of a second yesterday. And we are really looking forward to this one because they've learned a lot more about the cars now, Mark. They understand more about what's going on with the setup of the cars. And just as they roll off the line for the formation lap, Rain. We've got rain on the commentary box window. And if you want supercar excitement, just add water. What an unbelievable set of circumstances. The race has been delayed as a consequence of what's gone on in the Formula 3 sessions with a couple of crashes. As a consequence now, the weather that was probably always on the verge of looking like it was going to rain has now started to spit. <laughs> Teams are now getting organised with wet tyres. Now, we've got to check for this declaration to see what they're going to do here, so keep an eye on okay. everything. This time, we spotted it. It's on the bottom of our monitor. Race 4 has been declared wet. Phew. So all the chat about tyres, folks, just erase that last couple of minutes of chat. Doesn't matter. You can do what you want now. You can stick on the wet, so I wouldn't be doing that too early, but you're not compelled to have to mix and match, and so that was one of the advantages yesterday, and there's the confirmation on your screen as they try and generate a little bit of heat in these tyres. That wind has picked up. You can see the leaf litter around the top of the circuit. That's between the exit of turn five and approach to turn six. So the significant thing now is if you've started on a hard tyre, you've got to change four tyres. Because if yes. you've started on the soft, you can put two tyres in the rear. So that's going to be massively advantage for the people that have taken the punt on the super soft tyre to start with. But if you're in the cockpit of these cars at the moment, all that you need to really focus on is just making speed and let them worry about all that in the pit lane. Because by the time you go through the tyre menu of what could be, you'll have a gigantic ice cream headache. So, beautiful scenes of the Melbourne CBD in the background, and that is the great beauty of this racetrack around Albert Park, right next to the city, and we're flanked and we're blessed today and this weekend for an enormous number of people all around here who have come to see drivers in Formula 3, Formula 2. Jack Doohan's off to a ripping start, fast in practice. Obviously with Oscar Piastri, 21 years of age, from here in Melbourne, making his first Australian Grand Prix debut for McLaren. That's a big story, and we'll look forward to his performance later on today, remembering that he's already off to a strong start. He got into Q3 last time out in Saudi, and he is 12th after free practice one earlier today. Did a really good job. He's less than two tenths slower than his teammates, so that's a really good job straight up. Lando Norris is very, very fast. So, Neil, how many of these guys on the grid today have ever had an Australian flag start? How many years? So you think, when was the last time that one of these races started? Well, a couple of Muppets like you and I would have been staring exactly. at the flag back in the day. And, and how much effort did we go to to watch the wrist movement, the way the elbow would go, <laughs> and how much science was applied yes. to the start in those days, so, right? Folks, back in the day, life was black and white back then, I might mention, but uh, back in the day, we would actually go and watch this, a whole bunch of starts together, and then reckon that we had the science worked out. And of course, when the start came along, it was nothing like the original plan. But you're right, there's probably very few. In fact, I'd say there's nobody out there that's actually dealt with that. We're about to find out how that plays. That'll be fun. Cars look magnificent. It's a very different shape supercar in 2023. Wider track, two metres, all new body shape with a Chev Camaro. Gorgeous new Mustang GT as well. A little less horsepower. 
a lot less weight, a little less okay, arrow, and a whole much more handful to be able to manage these ready cars. Here. How much water is on that racetrack? What's the effect going to be? Will the tyres warm up sufficiently in these conditions to provide some sustained grip? How do you play the strategy? Your point's a ripper. Because the guys that are on the super soft, they've just got their first free kick. 100%. Mark Dutton there looking on. Anxious moments for everybody at the start of this race based on a little bit of weather, that little bit of a sprinkle that occurred as we left for the formation lap. Watch for the Australian flag, folks. This is going to be on. And don't sing the anthem. Just cheer your favourite driver. <laughs> so you can see the flags up on the top of the pit building. It's a southerly out there at the moment, and it has picked up. The wipers are on Brody Kostecki's car momentarily just to sweep across that screen. Watch to the left-hand side. Up goes the five-second board. Revs up to peak. They're fresh finding start, the bite point. Start, They're about to start. launch. Watch the Aussie flag, and for the second time this weekend in Melbourne, supercars are underway. Nice start by Van Gisbergen. Brown wants to argue the case. Shane out to the racing line and tries to sweep down, but he loses the lead. Does he hang on? And on and outside and in the weeds, one of the Penrite cars. So did Van Gisbergen manage to hang on? No, Will Brown. And in fact, Brody's up there as well. So not a great start for Shane on the super soft tyre. Now argues the case, nose to tail for the coat cars, but Brown hangs on in turn three. Great job. G given the tyre compound differences, those tyres have worked unbelievably. I don't want to be on the outside Thank now. Does he get through? Down. Oh Thank my God, that was down. close on the outside, turn five at a cold tyre. That is spooky. We've got a safety car Thank flag, or should I say a yellow flag out uh, at the moment, indicating the ESC's going to go out. So whatever happened down there at turn one, it's delivered someone into the gravel, and that someone is David Reynolds, and it's well buried. So his day is done after a very strong start in Newcastle. Came into the race today, sixth in the championship. Can't believe the start for Van Gisbergen, who should have been able to convert an advantage with those tyres. What a ripping start for Will Brown. <laughs> well, that was interesting. It was. I, I, I thought for sure that the hard tyre on that opening lap would be such a disadvantage, but he's done a remarkable job there, and he even drove around the outside to have that position taken off him. Watch this jump. It was a beautiful jump by both of them, but Brown got away really well. The onboard would be interesting. <laughs> Little rub. Yeah. And he hung on. I thought Shane was going to get there around the outside. It was a big lock-up back in the mid-pack, and then there was some hip and shoulder back here. The wide shot might tell a little more of the story. So nice job by Will to get down the inside. Uh, okay, so Cam Waters, David Reynolds, and Mark Winterbottom were the protagonists down there at turn one. And unfortunately for David, that car's been buried in the gravel. It's exactly done what it's designed to do, which is to stop the cars heading down there at high speed. If you recall a few years ago, Nick Perkett had a shocker down there. Remember they had a brake trauma yep. when he was driving for Brad Jones Racing and fired deeply down there. Here we are on board now with David. Listen for this. There was a bit of rear brake locking going on there, but there might have also been some other bumpers helping the cause. So the issue there, when we saw the back, when we saw the back of David Reynolds' car, oh, that doesn't look good. Nick okay. car a light. That's not good. Need to get to the to the nearest fire stop. And officials there straight away. Well done. Big shout out to all our volunteers and officials and everywhere we go, but a massive amount of these people. So that's going to be brake yeah. fluid. I think so. Some, so. I would imagine with, a, with flames coming out of that location in the car. We're under the safety car at Albert Park. Fortunately, Nick Perkat out of the car and all okay. With his back to us is Bruce Stewart, team principal on the right is co-owner Ryan Walkinshaw, Andrew Wiles from the comms and media department there also. Now that's had a significant amount of heat under that bonnet. It's done a lot of damage, unfortunately. That's a weird one. Uh, it looked 
I know what you're saying. It looks, the severity looked like an oil fire. It's pretty heavy weight, yeah, wasn't it? Well, actually, yeah, I'm going to revise my thoughts. Because originally when I saw the front left corner, I think maybe it's got some drama going with the brakes, popped a line or something. But, but this is way yeah. more evil. That's, that's a hell of a mess under there, isn't it? What a shame. So uh, we will get to that and do a post-mortem and understand more about it. But uh, that's going to keep them... The boys and girls at Walkinshaw Andretti United well amused now for the balance of the day and hopefully with fingers crossed they can turn that car around tomorrow. We're going to see more supercar action on the streets of Albert Park tomorrow and again on Sunday morning preceding the Grand Prix. It's Justin Burns Walkinshaw Andretti United there, Anthony McDonald talking to Nick Perkett and I think the fumes I think when everyone come up to Nick to talk to him about what style of smoke it was and Often the driver feedback with that is very important just to understand when it started and for what reason. Because often when they're burnt like that, you don't actually even know where the, the what fire the originated yeah. from. And, and that's obviously difficult then in a post-mortem. So that gentleman with the fire extinguisher there, as you say, Justin Burns, he's son of Neil Burns, who was a famous engine builder. And worked successfully uh, in the Holden dealer team. And, Larry Perkins, Peter Brock, they're battling for the Larry Perkins Trophy here this weekend in celebration of the six-time Bathurst 1000 winner and his fine achievements. And uh, this is a sad sight. Don't like seeing cars burnt and this kind of damage, and hopefully that can be turned around. But they're looking long and hard. It's damaged the bonnet as well. There's a lot more carbon on the brand-new cars in 2023. Replay of the start. Watching rear wheels, if you can see both the cars. Ooh. Decent jump there for Will, but was it too good? I think there might be a little problem there with that one. Here we go. Let's have a look. Good reaction time, I think. You reckon? Yeah. Well, that's what Will's going to think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he's saying that. Did a nice job here also just to stave him off. We can't see the flag now. That's the, that's the issue. Big difference in the reaction. So yeah. whether or not he went early or whether that was just a question of this actually might tell us the story. No, no, I reckon no, you're I right. Think he's actually just read yeah. it nicely. And maybe Jane couldn't see it properly. Still under the control of the safety car as the cars roll down pit straight at Albert Park. They're officially clicking laps off. There was a revised time certainty for the conclusion of this race and the reason for the safety car is we've got a situation where fire is engulfed in front of the Mobile One NTI Racing Ford Mustang of Nick Perkett. So already taking the stop to change compounds is Mark Winterbottom, who's been ultra successful here. I mentioned it just at the start of the race in the DeWalt entry. He's been really strong here over the years. When you look at the stats, Mark, it's pretty amazing how he's been able to convert. He had a clean sweep here at one year, which is a rarity, but a pretty hard thing to do. We've been coming here since 1996 with supercars. Missed out in 2007. And COVID interrupted proceedings for everybody through 2020 and 2021. But a huge amount of experience for Frosty, for Mark Winterbottom. And if he gets to the end of all four races this weekend, we've had 60 races on the streets of Albert Park. Clean sweep was actually back in 2015 for him. Seven wins and a couple of poles. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, nice pedigree to bring to the circuit this weekend. And they got off to a really strong start. He's enjoying the new car. Spoke enthusiastically about it yesterday. Said that he was not at all concerned by the behaviour of the car, probably from an era where they jumped around more as well and wasn't worried at all by the temperature either, but they had a power steering problem at Newcastle which just delayed their progress, but a good strong start. We'll get back into the lane now with an update from Ree. Nick Perkett, scary moment after you just come into pit lane. First, I just want to make sure you're okay. Yeah, I'm all good. Uh, I go right around fires, so I don't get too panicked and uh, I know what we have, you know, from my Shoe both helmet to my OMP race gear. I know I'm going to be safe. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what happened. No, got a good start, no contact or anything through the first lap. Obviously, the safety car was out early, and um, I thought I could smell something down the back straight, and I was like, that's weird. But you know, obviously, the boys prep everything overnight. Um, could have been a bit of CRC on exhaust pipe or something, so I thought, oh, I didn't think much of it. It's a race car, they always have smells. And then uh, got to the third slice, and I thought, oh my god, I am on fire. So then, uh, my next reaction, honestly, was to get to the supercar pit lane. I rolled in with no power, with the extinguisher already running. Um, but because I know how good this pit lane is, the supercar um, 
crews, every team comes together when it's a situation like that, or, you know, Sladies crashed yesterday, so credit to everyone for banding together, but, yeah, you know, I could just cry for the WAU guys. It's been a shocking start. Um, and, yeah, I might... Uh, Bailey will hate it, but I'm going to have to find the black cat and I'm going to have to sort it out. <laughs> I'm glad you're okay, Nick. I know they're about to get this race underway. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go, Chaz. And the reference to fire for Nick, 2019 Townsville. He was driving for Brad Jones Racing and his car engulfed in a fuel fire in the pit lane in Townsville. So he's been through a little bit of fire-related trauma in a supercar. Back under the control of Will Brown now as we get ready for this restart. So the coke car's in great shape, one and three at the moment. Van Gisbergen and his teammate Feeney are two and four. They've been given an all clear and green. They're under the control of Will. The speed is steady at this point. Once they get to a nominated point, they can overlap but not overtake until they get to the control line where you saw that Aussie flag a little earlier. This is good strategy. It's on the hard tyre, remember? Get it really wide, exactly. Well done. Very, very clever, Will Brown. Great restart. Green flag. We're back underway. Repco Supercars Championship. The Borough Pairs Melbourne Super Sprint. And Will Brown leads them into turn one. Van Gisbergen tucked behind. Then Kostecki, Feeney, Courtney, Mostert, Davis, Adi Pasquale, Randall, then LeBrock and a post-race investigation for what happened down there at Turn 1 where David Reynolds had already gone into the gravel and triggered the safety car. Up on the outside with some grip in hand, Van Gisbergen. If he can pull it off, he has the ideal line when they get to the left-hander, but he didn't quite get away with it. Gives him a little nudge. He's in the middle of a Coca-Cola sandwich at the moment. Have a look at Kostecki having a crack here as well. What a great start to this race. Unbelievable. Great driving by all those guys there. Real respect. Lots of room given, and Van Gisbergen's been caught back. He's gone way back to sixth after that exchange. Sometimes when you try to hustle and you get out of step with the rest of the pack, you can be monster. Remember, there's differences with tyres. Courtney's got a super soft tyre, and it's working to his advantage at the moment. That's him in the Snowy River Caravans entry. Mostert's in there as well on a super soft tyre. Our leader is Kostecki. His teammate Brown is in the game here as well. Now we've got Courtney up into second. Chaz down the inside, and the Red Bull boys have got their hands full. What a fantastic opening race, because we actually thought at that point there, you couldn't get through five and six together. They've driven around there in dual formation without bumping each other off the road. Beautiful driving. Hectic on the approach to wow. turn 11. Incredible intensity in the restart point. Big lock up into 13. You can hear the tyre squealing in the background as now Will Brown comes in to take the compulsory stop. And he's followed by a bunch of other drivers. Davison, LeBrock, Payne, Heimgartner, Pye. They're all in the lane as well, together with Cam Waters, who's way down the order at the moment. Pit lane congestion is going to be an issue. Now... Those people that stopped early are a big chance to win this based on what's gone on here. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, they've taken the pain They've early. taken the pain straight away. It's a shortened race. Yeah. It's a six-lapper yeah, we've been informed because of the delay there. with the F3 race and then our yeah, safety job. car yeah, intervention. Job. Wow. <laughs> Heart rates are up. Eyes are darting everywhere trying to figure out how this is going to play out. We saw a very, very intense motor race yesterday that was resolved by just one tenth of a second. The qualifying margins in the first couple of qualifying sessions that we saw were already crazy. We've got another couple of quality sessions tomorrow morning before the race and then a final race on Sunday. And this is an official round of the championship, the fifth time that we've had one at this location. And we'd never before raced on a Thursday, but we got stuck into it hard yesterday, and they've amped it up another level for today. Kostecki leads from Courtney. Mostert is flying out there at the moment. He's got purple against his name. His first sector faster than anybody else. Deep Pasquale covers down the inside. He's getting enormous pressure here from Brock Feeney. First in the queue that is stopped, by the way, is Macaulay Jones. Yeah. He is sitting 13th at the moment in the Pizza Hut entry. More cars now will peel off. Di Pasquale, one of them, joined by Thomas Randall in the Castrol entry. And Chas Mostert from third position has come in here as well. 
So keep an eye on McCauley Jones and see whether or not the advantage that he's got from pinning early puts him in good shape. Randall. Three go, 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 go. So McCauley Jones is currently ninth. And this is just going to pole vault him towards the front based on that strategy early. So clever, clever teamwork and strategy from that team. And just enough weirdness in the weather. There is McCauley. Just enough weirdness as it was yesterday to scramble this thing up. But he is under pressure. It's far from an easy beat for him at the moment because it's all going on. Frosty's firing away out there as well at the moment. We are watching this like Hawks. Jones, Hill, Smith. Winterbottom are all together, but having stopped, it's Jones followed by Winterbottom. That car there. So keep an eye on Frosty. There goes the Pizza Hut entry. And there's the yellow and black DeWalt car. So on correction, those guys are potentially battling for a podium here at the moment, depending on how they feed out. Yeah, so Winterbottom, they will have told him already that the leader after these stops is just up the road. So Macaulay Jones is eighth. Mark Winterbottom is tenth. Brody Kostecki is actually leading the race from Courtney and Van Gisbergen. But remember, they haven't stopped. There's Brad Jones. With Paul Scalzo from the engineering group at Brad Jones Racing. And they know exactly what the scenario is there at the moment. Last year, Macca had a sixth at this location. He actually runs strongly here. This could be a gigantic moment in his career. And the guy behind him has been a Bathurst winner. He's been a supercar champion. He's got a vast amount of experience as Feeney peels in now. So does Declan Fraser. So do you tell him? Do you tell Macca what's going on? Do you say to him... 20... Who's seeing you come in? No. There's something wrong with the timing, isn't there? No, he's in. Okay, so now this is confusing. So the first in the queue showing a stop was was Macaulay Jones. Okay, we've got trouble here for LeBrock. So LeBrock has clobbered the wall. He's got damage on the left front of that car. Safety car boards and flags, uh, safety car boards and flags. James Taylor in the background calling a safety car for the second time in this race. And that's probably the third or fourth driver this yeah, weekend that we've seen running good. wide on the exit of eight. So the only thing I can think of is that Macca jumped too early on the window, that the window wasn't open, open, that they had to actually bring him back in. So that's one that's got away, if that's the case. Well, it is, but still works for Winterbottom. Well, Winterbottom is in absolutely in the box seat here at the moment. But there will be a safety car, and will this be concluded under the safety car, depending on how long it takes to resolve the clean-up for Jack? It's the sole remaining Mobile One car out there at the moment for Chas Mostert. He's all over the back of Brock Feeney. So these guys are still nose to tail, despite the yellow flags. They're trying to hustle, but not hustle too hard. Well, this is always one of the dangerous aspects of our game, because the yellow flags are out, but you're still pressing on pretty hard, because you know it's all about track position. And there's the stricken car there of LeBrock. They're all blazing by. Now, I'm hearing also that Winterbottom stopped too early too, Neil. OK. So, oh, my God. All right, folks, are you keeping up at home? And if so, can you please send us an email? Because we need to. That'd be, that'd be if the internet worked here. Okay, <laughs> go, go, go. Yep. Oh, goodness me. So, Frosty back in the lane. So, scratch everything that you heard before. And now, we've got a completely different scenario. So, Kostecki, Courtney, Van Gisbergen, Golding, Fullwood, Winterbottom and Smith all in the lane. And that, I think, then leaves us with Feeney and Mostert at the top end of town, if my math is correct. Yes. So far, I haven't been too accurate in the prediction business. Nostra, Nostra Nealis. <laughs> and so, and this is the reason that group were hustling, because they want to know where they're going to feed in relative to those that have taken their stop. So this is a gigantic ball of string to actually unpack. Well, and, and the bit that's going to be intriguing is those guys that just stopped, they'll have hot tires. These guys that have just come out. Finish under safety car. Uh, so, yeah, just heard in the background this is going to finish under the safety car. Just robbed us. Because 
the bit that was going to be good is the cold tyre scenario on the opening lap of this, but it's going to finish on the safety car. So what's happened with those that were held up by the safety car and slowing them down to such an extent has allowed those that just stopped to come in, take their service and get out. That's going to deliver, it seems, a safety car victory to Brody Kostecki. What an extraordinary oh. after now. He's never won a supercar race. He's had a couple of second positions. He had a stunning pole at Sydney Motorsport Park last year. It does confirm the form that we've seen from these guys, but what a bizarre storyline this afternoon for supercar racing. Oh. Absolute craziness. And potentially James Courtney, who benefited from the super soft tyre at the start, getting in here and splitting Kostecki and Van Gisbergen. I'm just looking at his stats. He's had a couple of seconds, but yeah. you're 100% right. He hasn't had a win. So this is a very, very big moment for Brody. He was uh, second in race two, Sydney Motorsport Park last year. And he um, was second race five, Sandown 2021. So nearly, but not quite. But pole position has gone to him in 2022. And there's James Courtney, who's going to steal a trophy for position two this afternoon. And I think this is going to be something of an indication of the kind of day or afternoon, and perhaps the weekend we may have with this weather in the background, just creating a question mark. And that's what really changed the game with who could do what with their tyres. So we'll get to the story of what's gone on there. What it'll be is it'll be regarded as the end of lap two where you can take the stop yeah but they've come into the lane on lap two on lap two so they've come in and haven't done that extra lap so it'll be an argument over where the line is on the uh, on the arrival into the pit lane i'm glad that i'm in the commentary box and they can all go and have a friendly warm engaged and lucid discussion about that so brody kostecki first win james courtney Shane Van Gisbergen, his young teammate Brock Feeney, Mostert, Deep Pasquale, Will Brown, Bryce Forward, Thomas Randall, James Golding. Blacker? Yeah, it was unusual watching Whittlebottom come down there on his own. There was obviously something up. And the other thing that's mixed up the order here, mate, you, you, you're onto it earlier, Scafey. The people that went out on hard tyres, obviously we're going to put then the soft tyre on and had to put four tyres on. I counted a couple of stops. They're about nine seconds long. Those that went out on soft tyres just put two rears on. About three seconds because it was declared wet at the start of the race like yesterday. Where, if it ain't confusing enough, add that to the mix. Yeah, not an easy thing to unpack or for all of us to fully grasp, but there we go. This afternoon, the chequered flag is going to fly for the very first time in his career to Brody Kostecki, and it'll be a bizarre feeling for him, but you take them any which way you can get them. So Kostecki over Courtney and Van Gisbergen, and they all trickle back into the lane. We get to see them twice again tomorrow for qualifying, two different compounds of tyres, and then an additional race tomorrow, followed by a final race on Sunday morning. So big moment for the Coca-Cola racing by Erebus Outfit. Once again, showing great speed. And Brody Kostecki home across the line in front of all others with his teammate Will Brown down in seventh position. And that's what they've been battling for today. Here's the confirmation of the unofficial results. There'll be some discussion around elements of this. Kostecki, Courtney, Van Gisbergen, Feeney, Mostert, Deep Pasquale, Brown, Fullwood, Randall and Golding. And looking onto the second page here, Mark Winterbottom, Declan Fraser. Not a bad result for Declan. And then uh, 12th, Will Davison. Macaulay Jones, after we thought could have been in the box seat, had to come in for the second stop. Slade, Smith, Hill, Heimgartner, Payne and Scott Pye. And then further beyond Scotty, we had Cam Waters, Todd Hazelwood, David Reynolds, Jack LeBrock. Unfortunately for Jack, damage on that car. For David Reynolds, beached into the gravel at turn one. And for Nick Perkat, the awful situation of a pretty substantial fire for the Mustang. And that's going to sideline that car. So they were battling for the Larry Perkins trophy in this Burrapairs Melbourne Super Sprint. And we've got two more instalments to come. It's worth 75 points of victory here across the four races for each of them for a 300 point weekend. Highlights, there's plenty of them. <laughs> Take your pick. Race number four of the championship. Very even start between both Shane Van Gisbergen and Will Brown. Different tyres on both those cars. And in a masterful move down the inside, Will Brown gets it done. 
Shane out pretty wide, got checked up, but there was some contact back in the pack that will be investigated post-race. It involved Mark Winterbottom, Cam Waters, and unfortunately David Reynolds out in the gravel, and the car ran wide enough that it was actually beached, triggered the safety car. At the same time, this car became a light somewhere down around the back of the circuit near turn 11, and Nick Perkett making it back into the lane. They did manage to get the fire out, but not before a lot of damage was done. Restart, and it was a beautiful restart job by Will Brown. Mark Scaife called a perfect timing of that, opened up a margin over Shane Van Gisbergen. Astonishing racing. It was a block of supercars up at turns four and five, and Van Gisbergen hustling on the inside, the coke cars on the outside. Brock Feeney got into the party as well. Have a look at them. It's a quadrant of supercars through turn five, and impressively, they all got through without feeding either one or the other into the wall, which was pretty impressive and great sportsmanship. Very fast down the back section of this racetrack now that was changed in 2022. Lots of hip and shoulder back in the pack, cars getting pushed wide. There is a timing line down there. Then we saw a whole bunch of people roll into the pit lane and unfortunately, just as that was going on, Jack LeBrock, who's shown tremendous speed in the truck assist car this weekend, falling foul on the outside of turn eight. We've seen other people in the wars there this weekend as well. And it looks like quite a bit of damage on the front left corner of that car. So under the safety car in a shortened race for the first time in his career, Brody Kostecki gets the jam. 75 points for his trouble this afternoon in a race that will be talked about for quite some time. It certainly will be. Brody Kostecki, a young 25-year-old with a great racing pedigree. He's done a lot of racing around the world. He's a hardcore motor racing fanatic. And he's really acclimatised to these cars very well. They move around a lot. They've got less grip. He grabs them by the scruff of the neck and he drives the wheels off the things. And that's been noticed by Barry Ryan and the team. And as a consequence, he's one of the young men, we said at the start of the year, who if you got your brain around the cars early and you know what you want from it, you will get a yield. And he's demonstrating that straight away. There's never any doubt about his commitment and there's no second guessing that you are getting 100% from him. And so therefore puts the pressure back on the team and back on the car to get it right. So that's a beautiful job. He's 25 years of age. He's spent quite a chunk of time in his junior career in the US and he learnt to race hard and race fast and it's worked well. So congratulations. He is a deserving winner despite the bizarre circumstances because of the pace and the determination that he's shown. And George Commons, his engineer, comes in. Shannon Keeley also from that team comes in to give him a hug of congratulations. This has been a fine performance this weekend in broad terms. And remember, this was the driver that generated the first ever pole in the new generation of supercar in Newcastle several weeks ago. So it's not a flash in the pan. So they'll be very, very pleased with this performance at Erebus and they take home the 75 points. But the interesting thing here is uh, what sort of racing is to come tomorrow and then again on Sunday. That was some of the most intense stuff. The battle between the cluster of cars at turns three, four and five, worth the price of admission. Absolutely outstanding. Will Brown jumps into the party as well. Everybody's pleased with that result. It sets up some more fabulous supercar racing for the balance of the weekend, Jess. Indeed.